on to our episode of Super Reaction Bros. I'm Chris. And I'm Christopher. No, it's so we're back with a pitch meeting from Screen Rant. Yay, we haven't done one in a while. Yeah. So um, this one, I, I, I do, I am a bit more enthusiastic than I actually sarcastically sound. So on today's, we're just looking at Pirates of Car Caribbean, Caribbean, how you say it, Dead Man's Chest. The sequel, the follow-up to from the follow -up, first one. Which, you know, definitely better than the first. Definitely was better than the first. But then we did get that confusing third one. I guess you'll do a pitch meeting for that eventually. But let's yeah, start. Yeah, because that's the, cause the, it was a two and threes with the one that they shot together, I guess. They shot, those were the ones they shot back to back. Back to back. So, all right, let's just dive into this and see what uh, they have to uh, bring up for uh, this pitch meeting for Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. So here we go. Oh, you have a pirate sequel for me? Yes, sir, I do. Amazing. So what's going on with the characters? Okay, so Elizabeth and Will are about to get married, right? Okay, okay. So marriage is still a thing then. Interesting. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. What? Can marriage still be a thing? Well, it's just that in the last movie, <laughs> they all found out that there was treasure cursed by heathen Aztec gods. So, yeah. Well, I just figured that everybody finding out that Aztec gods are real might have some impact on the <laughs> yes. people's beliefs. But you're saying marriage is still totally a thing. Huh. Yeah, marriage is still a thing. Okay, great. Great. So anyway, their wedding is actually stopped by this guy, Lord Beckett, and he has warrants to arrest them because they helped Jack escape in the last movie. Oh, right, 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 right. Oh, this so he wants to, to go oh find Jack because Jack has this compass that points to whatever the holder wants the most. Okay, so the whole movie's about finding a compass. Well, see, actually, the compass is going to point to a key which opens a chest which contains a heart which belongs to Davy Jones who controls the seven seas. Oh, okay. That sounds like enough knowledge nautical theme MacGuffins to fill up the <laughs> yeah, I think that would be enough checkpoints, so Will takes off. Yes. Beckett says he'll set Elizabeth free if Will does this. He's got to find Jack in the entire sea. Yeah, and he's going to pretty quickly. Oh, he is? Yeah, because in these movies, the Caribbean Sea is the size of a little fishing pond. Oh, it is. That's great. So anyway, Jack is on the Black Pearl, and he's going to be like, why is the rum always gone? That's like what he said in the last movie, kind of. It sure is, sir. People really like that line, so we're bringing it back, kind Oh, uh, the line back kind of. seem to really like it as tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. wow, wow. So anyway, Jack gets visited by Will's father, Bootstrap Bill, who's a part of Davy Jones's crew on the Flying Dutchman ship. Okay. And Bootstrap is like, hey, you made a deal with Davy Jones years ago, so now you gotta join the crew or be taken by the Kraken monster. Both terrible options for sure. Yeah, and then Bootstrap leaves Jack with the black mark, which the Kraken is attracted to, and he vanishes back to the Flying Dutchman. Oh, this guy can teleport. I bet that's gonna come into play later. Nope. nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> nope. Kraken can take down a ship in like two seconds flat. Very scary. Yeah, unless there are main characters on the ship, in which case it takes five to ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> to slow down for important people. It sure is, sir. So anyway, eventually Will finds the Black Pearl on this island and discovers that Jack and his crew have been captured by a tribe of cannibals. Well, how'd they get out of the cannons? They're not cannonballs. These are people that eat people. Oh, okay, gross. Yeah, and they think... Hey, I'm curious. <laughs> Why? I'm clear, but the thing is, they actually plan on eating their chief. They have this whole ceremony plan. Oh, no. And so Will and the rest of the crew get put in these bone cages suspended from cliffs. Why would the cannibals hang their food over a cliff? Because it's going to make for a fun escape scene in this movie. Yeah, it no does. Only oh, reason. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and so they all escape through the power of physics not being a thing, and the whole thing's going to take up a solid 20, 30 minutes of runtime with really fun action stuff. Does it move the story forward at all? Not nope. really, no, but it's going to take up a solid 20, 30 minutes of runtime with really yeah. fun action stuff. Well, great. Anyway, and he just said the fucking scene. Escaping. She's trying to catch up with everybody because she's in the movie, too. Right. And so she sneaks onto the ship and tries to get this crew to bring her to the island of Tortuga. How does she manage that? Well, she leaves a dress lying around so everybody will think there's a ghost on the ship. That's her plan, tricking people into thinking she's a ghost. That's what we're going with. And then she does some expert level puppeteering work and it's completely dependent on nobody looking slightly upwards because then they'd see her just standing there. I mean, there's no way that plays out perfectly. And that plays out perfectly. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. And Will are going to encounter Davy Jones and his crew, and this guy just teleports over. Oh, this guy can teleport. I bet that's going to come into play later. Nope. nope. All right. Yeah. This whole crew is super spooky because there's like this curse or whatever, and they're slowly becoming sea life and merging with the Flying Dutchman. What are you talking about? Well, they all have like sea stuff on them. Like one of them has a shark on his head. Davy Jones just full on has an octopus as a face. So how does that work? Did an octopus just settle on his face? one day and just kind of stay there <laughs> with them? I don't know. Fair enough. 
So the Jack Fear kind of enough. backstabs Will and leaves him on the flying Dutchman, <clears throat> but he gets to reconnect with his father, so that's kind of nice. Oh, he reconnects with his long-lost, partially a fish father. That's nice. Yeah, he partially a fish Jamie father. Jones to a game of Liar's Dice. Oh, he does. Yeah, and he says if he loses, he'll join the crew, but if he wins, Davy Jones has to give him the key to the chest, which he keeps on him. Oh, very high stakes. And so Will's father jumps in the game, too, and loses to save Will. Oh. And Will is like, Dad, that whole thing was just so I could see where Davy Jones keeps the key, you dummy. What if Davy Jones didn't keep the key on him? Then Will wouldn't have found anything out. Yeah. It was a massive risk to take, but it yeah. works out perfectly, as these things often do, because I write them that way. But <laughs> I write them the key off of him now, though. Actually, it's going to be super, super easy. easy. Really easy. Oh, really? Yeah, he just walks into Davy Jones's room that night while he's sleeping and slips the key off of him. No problem. A strange man came onto his ship and specifically asked about the key that could lead to his death, and he didn't take any precautions to protect it when he went to bed. That's right. <laughs> well, fantastic. So well, fantastic. Bill finds himself hiding on the front of the Flying Dutchman, which is a ship that goes underwater. Seems like that might affect him in some way. Well, it doesn't. Hey, jeez. And so it Jack geez. and Elizabeth and that jerk Norrington from the last movie, they all find the chest, and then Will shows up, too. How did Will get there? Oh, I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about how Will gets there. <laughs> Of that thing, you scary person. And so this big three-way sword fight breaks out for the chest because Norrington wants to use it to get his life back as a douchey officer, and Jack wants it to call off the Kraken, and Will wants it to release his father from the Dutchman. Seems like a couple of those goals might overlap. Maybe. So then Davy Jones and his crew show up, and Norrington manages to get away with the heart. Oh, no. And so when the others get on a ship, there's going to be this big Kraken attack, and Elizabeth is going to kiss Jack and handcuff him to the Black Pearl. Why? Well, because the Kraken is after him specifically. So this is the only way the others can get away. Oh, that makes sense. So then Jack gets <laughs> swallowed up by a kraken, and Davy Jones gets super angry about his missing heart, and everybody else goes to see this lady, Tia Dalma, who reveals she brought Barbosa back from the dead. Whoa, wait, whoa, what's happening with all, <laughs> all of that? Uh, hey. Dude, what? Oh, yeah, we're just going to cut it off right there so people will want to come see the next movie. Just not resolving anything at all. Yeah, so people will want to come see the next movie. That's actually very smart. Oh, and then we're going to have a post credit scene where we find out that that dog is now the chief of the tribe. Oh, that's cute. They're gonna eat the dog. Wait, they're gonna eat that <laughs> dog. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, what do you think? Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. I do think we should get somebody wacky to come in and help with the designs of Davy Jones's crew. Those people need to be weird looking. I mean, Johnny Depp's in the movie. I mean, yeah. So, so <laughs> you know, pretty obvious who we could get to help out. Timber in <laughs> Hey everybody, Ryan here. I didn't know that actually. Yeah, That's yeah right. he did, he did. That's why I was like, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, look, look, I wrote just like this. And yeah, because I just, you know, like, and that's how it plays out because I wrote just like that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. In the game with the wedding and stuff like that, you think of those asset gods, you know, that, and that was my favorite part of the beginning. You think, you think they would, like, kind of not do it? Not to the wedding. Not to everything that they did deal with, with, you know, the asset gods and the curse and all that. So. But yeah, that was that was pretty good. But yeah, it's I I think I still think the second one's interesting. Yeah, that scene with the giant prison walls and stuff like that. It's like that's just for like. And I like how they did it too, because they said it twice. Because it's like they're killing time. That's what they're doing. That's what it was. So it's like we're killing time. So this kills about twenty or thirty minutes in the film for us. Yeah, we cut it down that much. Like I didn't realize. I forgot she was the one who married. Mar marionating the dress. I don't. I don't speak. Um, well, I don't speak. I don't yeah. speak well. <laughs> yeah, uh, I thought I thought well. she was one puppeteering the dress and stuff. I for actually. Forgot. I like to make a good point, but why couldn't they just look up? You yeah. know, they didn't see the whole thing. I don't know, but yeah, this is another good one from. Of course, I think we're definitely gonna get uh, uh, at World's End. So that one's definitely yeah, extremely one, confusing. Yeah. That one's gonna be. That's great. the most. It's decent, but it's just really confusing. You know where they went with the story, so I can't wait to see uh, them to do the third film. That's gonna be fun and exciting to watch. So other than that, folks, if you're new to the channel, you can hit the like button. If you want to talk to us more about stuff like this, comment down below. If you want to share us around, share it around. And if you like us just a little bit more than anybody else, when it comes to talking about pitch meetings, hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon as well. Let us know what you guys' thoughts are on this uh, this pitch meeting overall. Did you guys enjoy? Did you have fun? Um, did, do you have any favorite moments in it? Uh, you know, what did you guys think of that Pirates movie? Were you, did you you, do you agree or you thought it was definitely you know definitely a bit better than the first film um, and you know it was entertaining for uh, for you enough that's about it um, and favorite part in this speech meeting do you have any favorite moments that they brought up that just had you rolling 
saying it was just too hilarious. <laughs> Let us know in the comments down below, but don't you thought of our reaction overall, but most importantly, we thank you for watching. So until next time, I'm Chris. I'm Christopher. And this has been the Iron Hour Pirates filled episode of SRB. See ya. Later. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to check out any of our previous reactions, as well as one of our other SRB shows, check out one of the playlists down below. And if you want to check us out in the social universe, you can find us on Twitter and start us at Super React Bros. As well as on Facebook at Super Reaction Bros.